I'm a fan of both Kratky and NFT for hydroponics, but I think I found a method that's better than both. Why? Because it uses some of the best parts of both methods combined into one. Let me explain. Say we're growing a plant. That plant is going to need three things available to the roots. It's going to need water, it's going to need nutrients, and it's going to need oxygen. Water and nutrients are absorbed by the roots and then transported throughout the plant in order for it to grow. But then oxygen is also required by the roots for a different reason. The roots essentially breathe oxygen and require it in order to grow and stay healthy. This explains why plants die when they're overwatered. If we have our plant here, it's in a pot, we fill the pot all the way up with water, now there's no way for oxygen to get into those roots. Any hydroponic method then that we use will need to provide all three, water, nutrients, and oxygen to the plant roots in order for them to thrive. The Kratky method is popular because it works well and is so simple. So with the Kratky method, we have a jar here and we fill it with water and nutrients. This is a nutrient solution. The plant is then placed at the top of the jar with most of its roots hanging down into that nutrient solution. Now the Kratky method doesn't use any electricity, so there's no pumps or anything. So this water is just staying here stagnant. So it's not going to have much oxygen in it. However, the plant is still able to get oxygen through this section of air here. And essentially what the roots do is they sort of split into two sections. You get a section where the roots are air roots. They're contacting the air and pulling in oxygen. And then you have water roots that are contacting the water and pulling in both the water and the nutrients. So the whole root mass works together to get all three, getting the oxygen, the water, and the nutrients. As time goes on, the plant uses up the nutrient solution, and these roots need to grow further down to get into the nutrient solution that's remaining. And then you end up with a larger section of air roots up here on the top and then a larger section of water roots that are further down in the jar. So the advantage of the crack key system is it's so simple to do. A disadvantage can be scaling this up. So you can imagine if you're just using a jar, if you wanted to grow 50 plants or 100 plants or 500 plants, you're going to need a lot of jars. There are some other ways you could do it to scale it a little better than just using individual jars. But that is a challenge. So that brings us to the next method that scales a lot easier. This method is called Nutrient Film Technique, or NFT for short. How NFT works, you have a large reservoir that's filled with a bunch of nutrient solution. And then there's a pump that pumps water up into one side of a long channel. Water then flows along the bottom of that channel, making a film, and then it flows out back into the reservoir. So you're continually circulating nutrient solution through this rail, through this channel. Then what the plant roots do is they grow down to the bottom of the channel and then spread out along this nutrient film. What that allows them to do is access both water and nutrients down in the film, but since they're right on the surface of it, they can also access the air and get oxygen. So you don't end up with air roots and water roots like you do in Kratky. You just have roots that can access both at the same time. And that's really good for growth. So NFT can grow plants really quickly. The other advantage of NFT is that you can scale it really well. So if you want to add more plants, you just make these channels longer and add more plants. Or just keep adding channels and have all of them pumped from the same reservoir really easy to scale up and grow hundreds of plants. There are a few disadvantages of an NFT as well, of course. So one of them is that you generally need to start these plants separately. Depending on how the system is set up, you often can't set a new seed right into this system. You would start the seedlings in a separate system under a grow light or on a heat mat or something. And then once they've got a couple roots poking out, then you set them down into this nutrient film and they grow from there. So you kind of need two stages when you're doing 
NFT for the baby plants and then the mature plants. Another disadvantage of NFT is during a power loss. So if you lose power, the pump quits working, water can no longer get up into the top of this channel, and any water that was remaining in the channel is going to quickly drain out, and then the plants that are here will have no access to water at all. So with an NFT system, if you lose power, your plants are going to be in trouble in a very short amount of time. Both Cracky and NFT work great, and they've been used by lots of people to grow a lot of produce. But I think I found a system that combines the two and brings some advantages from both into the same system. And I'm calling it the Nutrient River Technique, or NRT. At the first glance, this system appears to be just another NFT system, but it has some key differences. Just like NFT, we start with a large reservoir filled with a bunch of nutrient solution, pumps the water up into one side of a channel, that water flows down the channel, and then out back into the reservoir, so it's circulating. However, you'll notice the water is deeper than just a film. We've got a couple inches deep water, a river, not just the film, and then it's that height of the water is controlled by where the exit of the rail is. Then what the plants do is they grow roots down into the nutrient solution. Most of the roots end up floating right on this boundary. And so just like NFT, they're getting access to water and nutrients, and they're getting access to oxygen all at the same time. So those roots are really efficient and allowing that plant to grow really quickly. There's also some roots that will go down into the nutrient solution, and they'll become sort of like water roots with Kratky, where they're accessing more of the water and nutrients and less oxygen. However, since the water's circulating in this system, there is still some some dissolved oxygen in this water which these roots can access as well and then there's some air roots that are accessing only oxygen up in this section so you end up with kind of a hybrid of crack key and nft where the roots can do all three things depending on where they are this allows the system to be extremely efficient and extremely productive it also allows similar to NFT for a system that can scale really well. If you want to add more plants, you can just make the rail longer or add more rails. Particularly for me, I like to grow indoors, so it's super important to make the best use of space, and I want to grow a lot of produce in a small area, and this system really lets you do that. Another advantage of this system is how it operates during a power loss. So in this case, if we lose power, the pump stops, there's no longer water coming into the inlet. So what happens is the water does go down a little bit as it drains out. However, the way I place the inlet, all of the water is never going to escape. There's always going to be some water in the bottom. So if you have a power loss, your system essentially turns into a crack key system while you wait for power to come back. So now your plants can still access the water, the water will become stagnant, but the roots, the water roots can handle that. And then you'll have roots above that are air roots still pulling in oxygen. So these plants are going to be fine for a while while you get power back on and you don't have to worry about it. This system also allows me to grow a plant all the way from seed to harvest in a really efficient way. So what I do is I take a seed and I put it into a seed plug and then I put that into a net cup and place it right into the system and then place them really close together. Then the water level, which is controlled by the outlet, can be set to just barely touch the bottom of that seed plug and keep it moist while the seed germinates and grows. As it gets bigger, I then separate the plants further apart so that they have room to grow. And when they reach maturity, I have them plenty separated so they can reach full size and I can have a really nice head of lettuce. And this allows me to optimize the space that I'm using and also grow plants all the way from seed to harvest in the same system. I'm, I don't have to start them in a separate spot and keep track of if I'm keeping the seedlings moist. 
It's just taking care of all of that for me. I've been growing produce in my home using this technique for over five years now, and I believe it's the best available hydroponic setup for home growers. This system is so easy to get up and running, and I've grown literally tons of produce in my basement using it. I've grown lettuce, spinach, kale, chard, herbs, strawberries, tomatoes, and a bunch of other things, all using this technique. The system's also really easy to set up. I've created a step-by-step -step guide on how to build it and a list of the materials you need. All of this is totally free on my website. Lots of people have used it. I recommend you go check that out if you're interested.